Aloha. I'm standing here in front of Malama Ma no, sorry, Makua Military Reservation. I almost said Malama Makua because that's where we came. Let's to Malama this place and you know what does that mean considering the fact we can't really touch anything. I'm not allowed to even pull a weed or pick up trash. So it's kinda of like being uh, at Kahoo Lobby, you know, if you didn't drop it, don't pick it up. And that's the instruction that we get. But it's good to be here even though the weather is not as sunny as usual. That's not a bad thing. It's good to be in the valley when it's cool. Um, so this is one of our accesses. We have two on one. Um, we is Malamamakua, which is the organization that is moving on the side right now for these other guys to come in. It goes Fred Dodge and Vince, yes. Um, so we're here to make the valley or help to make the valley a little happier because sometimes it's very sad. It's locked up, you might say, and it's good for us to come and visit as often as we can. Um, it makes her happy. So basically that's why we're here. Because until we can change things, it's going to be this way right up until the U.S. moves out of Hawaii, which is not a bad thing. And because it sucks being in occupied. And this is a tangible, a tangible evidence of occupation because of our inability to access a sacred place without having to ask permission first. How does that work? Anyway, welcome to Makua. Hello and good morning. I'm Vince Kanai Dodge, standing here at the gate of uh, Makua Valley. And, um, you know, what a beautiful place. What an incredible valley. What a place to, um, and a moment to work out um, kind of some of the complexities of our world, of our aina, and of our relationships between um, entities and between organizations. This morning, the thing that um, is on my mind is the dynamics of the relationship between community and the military, our military. Um, a couple of things. First of all, our military can no longer um, destroy us to protect us. They cannot desecrate and contaminate Aina in order to protect us. That's a thing of the past. We, we cannot have that anymore. Um, and, and so we're, we're at the receiving end right now of a relationship that's been really poorly designed, one that keeps us apart. And that's what we're working on as, as Malama Makua. What we've come to realize is that cultural access days in Makua Valley is our days. And we are going to work consistently now on impressing that upon the Army. gate uh, that uh, doesn't allow me to enter in Makua because I'm not in the list today. Um, I didn't want to talk right now because I'm really upset about it. It's been a year that I've been visiting this place as a research scholar, as an environmental anthropologist to do a research, but uh, I've grown uh, um, accustomed to this place and I, every time I come here I see a different uh, identity of this valley and every time she shows me something and uh, there's a relationship and that's all 
what my work is about, to understanding the relationship between the human being and the valet, and find a way to let the valet talk by itself, not through anyone, but just through her story, her mo'olelo, her uh, relationship, her interconnection with the people that visit her. So, uh, I'm really sad I cannot go in. So this gate, it's a border, this gate uh, will block uh, people to go inside. Um, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but that's how it is right now. So, and I really hope that this will change. It's just because I'm not in the list. I've been visiting the valley for the past year, every month, twice. And just because I'm not in the list for someone, uh, uh, because someone forgot or whatever, or because I didn't send the, the mail to the right person, um, that's where I am. I'm outside. Doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not connected with the place, but it means that I cannot visit the place and bring my regard, bring my offering that I have in my bag to the ballet and join the group that will talk story and we'll learn more of the ballet because every time we learn something it depends what the ballet wants to show us. So, mahalo. We're here to change the dynamics of the relationship because we must work together. And these days, cultural access days, are days where the valley has called the community to come and visit, you know? And so we're not in the army. So we are going to impress upon the army to not treat us like we're in the army. Um, and we're going to engage them in, 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 in seeing why it's so important that these days happen and that they are well supported. And I'll just say, you know, we, um, we greatly appreciate the support crew that's here on the ground every access day for us. These are really good brothers and sisters that we've had the, um, the pleasure and the honor of working together with for the last uh, 16 years. Um, so, but it's, you know, it's the upper command, it's the nature of the organization of the Army that we will continue to nudge and to push from the outside and we need folks on the inside, people that are in the army, to push hard as well. Because we have to change this dynamic. It's got to be a dynamic. It's got to change to one of working together. We must. And we know that, you know, we have such great issues and challenges in our world. Global warming, climate change, the desecration and the pollution of, of Aina that needs to be restored. These are huge and they're all over the world, you know. And so for the, for the well-being of the species of all, of, of, of the children of the species of all beings, of all living beings, we must work together. You know, and that, that seems to be the call of, of Makua. You know, Makua is parent. That's why this is such an amazing place to be in this moment. Because it's like, it's like your parent telling you, reminding you, you must take care of each other. You know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta change, we gotta cut through the bureaucracy, the, the, the BS, the things that continue to separate, that are, that are promulgated to separate us and to keep us apart. And, and then we're gonna find that place to work together. And Aina loves us, this valley loves us. She loves when we come and visit, you know? So we have this opportunity to really connect in this way. Mahalo nui.
Yeah. Well, walk with me, because then they'll see my... Oh, my God. Oh no! Why? Why? Why would? Uh, why would they take school children? All of its effectiveness is when we're Connections! Oh my gosh! Isn't that the school? That's, that's connections. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What, what school is that? Connections. They're connections on the bus. They're called connections. That's the one that tried to rescue last year. Yeah. yeah! There you go. There it is on video. You know, but there were only about 10 kids on the bus. Well, maybe le less than last year. Yeah, a lot less. And the yeah, other so buses too. Very few on there. So they should I think it's that. A, yeah. <laughs> significant. And last year they had lots of like 15 passenger vans of schools going in. So I think the numbers have dramatic, dropped dramatically. Oh, that's good, Uncle. I'd Very say hard. not even a third of what we see last year. So that's good. See, they block, they put this big chuck here to block us from trying to leaflet here, you know. Oh, uh, it doesn't here's work. The, here's the line. They just gave us a sign to stand in front of. Like. <laughs> Look, they're trespassing on it. Trespassing all over the place. But Ruth said this is their boundary line. Oh. The yellow stakes. You see the yellow stakes oh, going down there? Oh, they're trespassing. You see them? Oh, yeah. That's the yellow stake. Yeah, I see them in the bush. The flowers. Are there. That's their line. So they're past the line. They're past the line here. You gotta back up your shed. Hey, brother. Going for more propaganda. Those guys are going for military propaganda. There's a connect, uncles. We should all join the army. <laughs> the Hawaiian army. <laughs> and burns turned into oxide particles and it's the most deadly form of radiation if you inhale it. It won't cause you to drop dead today, but it's gonna, it not only causes cancer, out to every school on the island. Right, let me have one. So the, the numbers are down, I would say, uh, the numbers are, there's a short video there, you can see Dr. Pan explaining that. And here's the leaf that we prepared for the day. Can check that out, buddy. Yeah. We'll just show you how. We just want people to, uh, you know, get informed. But I'm glad to see the school, the number of kids. Uh, here's the leaf. The numbers are way down, which is good. You're pregnant women or kids, young kids. Why expose kids? I agree. So, so if you can help us out, be stay off the road. We'll do that. Yeah. Don't block cars, don't jump on the road, block cars. Yeah, we're here. Okay. So Aloha people, we're not okay. here to be hostile or anything like that. All right, that, you know? sounds good. Yeah, we appreciate right, it. Take care. Okay, you guys. thanks for your good spirit. Appreciate it. Be safe. Video. The police chief in Hilo said, 
what are what were they all doing up there because there's only like so many people that can go uh, patrol up here and there was like way more cops than like he made like he never know oh, the chief yeah it? yeah it was on a video like right after this all happened last earth day up here, huh? And he's like, that's not the jurisdiction. <laughs> you leaving? Yeah. Oh, okay. You, go, you come see you guys I'll after. I'm back to the I gotta head back down. Oh, here. you gonna go home? Yeah, go. Yeah, you need a rest. Oh yeah, we need that. Yeah, yeah. Stop by. Average is about 34. What is the safe? Yeah, there's no safe. Oh, there's no safe. Anything up. They're claiming. Any reading. They're that's on reading. That means it's not safe. Right. Every about 40 or something. They're, they're claiming it's about 24. You know? Yeah, right. It's 36 right now. Yeah, I know. It went up to 38. Oh, it's spicy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's neat. Well, you said it was just bombing. Yeah, yesterday. It was bombing. It was bombing oh. yesterday, so there's been some live. If the wind come this way, probably be could be more worse. Yeah, if the wind come from the south, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was bombing in the afternoon. It changed. Yeah, in the afternoon the wind comes. But we're still getting the trains up there in Guadalajara. Yeah. Should we see? Mm -hmm. And whenever I present about Pohakuloa, I wear black. 
And the reason that I wear black is because I'm in a state of mourning for our Aina, which is being attacked right now by the U.S. military. And one of the perspectives that I offer, and I'm going to say this now, I'm not here to convince you. I am not here to debate with you. I am here to talk from my now and speak my truth. And it is for you to hear, it is for you to receive if you want to, and if you don't, that's fine. Um, but I am definitely not here to debate. Um, so for two years of my life, Avani and I, uh, we had the privilege of living in Waikiki. And Waikiki is such a beautiful Aina. And if you don't know where that is, it's right next to Pohapulua. It's the closest residence um, to the military base right now. It's about five miles away. Um, there's a handful of individuals who live there, who are able to live there. This Aina is so, so rich. And this is where I learned to farm, and where I learned about the spirit keepers of this place. And, and when I learned about the destruction that is happening in our neighboring lands, and to paint you a picture, where I lived in Waikiki, I got to live on the farm that I worked at, and it's just endless fields of pastures that are golden in the sunset, and you see the ancestors dance in the sky, the most amazing crop formations that I've ever seen in my life. I woke up to Mauna Kea, I fell asleep to Mauna Kea, surrounded by Mauna Loa, Hualalai, Haleakala, and being there, we wake up in the morning, we all do this, we all wake up and we have our routines of things that we do, of, of food that we eat, of coffee that we drink. And for me, while living there, during the live fire trainings, and even not even so, it was very common for me living in here in this era where I was organic farming, taking care of animals and plants, to wake up to the sounds of bombs falling, detonating on our island, to see the pictures on our walls moving because they're bombing Pohapuloa um, to wake up and to just, it's not even just waking up and falling asleep to these sounds. Like, I would go to sleep at you know, 8, 9, and then I would wake up at 10, 30, 11, and the military is bombing Pohapuloa and the feeling, many people know the, the sound of hearing these things. And once I started to speak out about it and share about it on my Facebook, I started to learn that, hey, I'm not the only one who is concerned about what is happening at Pohapuloa. There are people in Volcano, in Hawilo, in Kona, in Waipolo, in Waimea, all around the island that are being affected by what is happening at Pohapuloa, even though they do not reside within five miles of Pohapuloa. But they are still feeling the vibrations of not only the bombs dropping, but the intentions that are being made, the destruction that is vibrating outward um, to the rest of our homes. And so living here in Waikiki, you know, it's not only hearing the bombs falling and dropping, but it's, it's that emotion. And just sitting here, I'm starting to shake thinking about it because we don't live there anymore. We moved away. And, and I love Waikiki and I love Pohapuloa, but being so close to the destruction and the chaos that is happening just tears me apart into pieces. And hearing the jets, the jets that continuously fly by, and which, have, which has increased in my perspective in the two years that I've lived, in Waikiki, in the past just four to six months, there's been intensification of the jets that are flying, the helicopters that are flying, they fly close to the homes, they fly over the homes, they spook the animals. There is nothing normal, in my perspective, about bombing Aina, about hurting Papahana Hopi, about damaging what gives you life. And so being so close in Waikiki, you know, one of the things that I'm going to mention, but I'm not going to go into depth about is, is Havani and her health. You know, and, and we're young, we're 28, we eat healthy, we, I grow the food that we eat. I help slaughter or catch the things, the meat that we consume. The, uh, we play a very crucial role in tending to our own bodies, but she has been sick. Since we moved in, she had, like, within two months of living in Waikiki, she had gotten very sick. And then through the past two years of living there, she, her sicknesses, we don't know what it's due to, but it's living in Waikiki were activated. And things started to happen to her body, which is why we had to leave Waikiki, is because we weren't sure what was in the area, whether it be physical or spiritual, which is probably a combination of both that was damaging her and damaging me as well. 
Um, but being in that area and seeing and raising the animals and knowing that they never ever got used to the sounds of the bombs. Like, if you raise animals or if you work with animals or if you're a fisher or a hunter, you know when animals get scared. And the animals always got scared at the farm. They got skittish. Like, safety, safety on a farm. You cannot work with animals when you're bombing the aina because they are so skittish. They don't know what's happening. They, they're feeling these vibrations. They're hearing these sounds that are happening. Like at the farm that I worked at, we, you know, because I was a manager, I had to subconsciously initiate these rules for our staff's safety on the land. Um, you know, as a cultural practitioner, which is what you know, people know us by, is cleansing the aina, cleansing the land of, of what was being sent across to the spirit realm, who right now, in what I have come to understand, are trying their best to help us. They're trying to keep the damage that is being done at Pohakuroa and at Bogor, so that we in the human realm are not affected by it, and that we can be protected. So they're trying, they're asking for our help, they're not asking for us to, to, to be violent, they're not asking us to put our lives on the line, but they're definitely reaching out and asking for our help to show up, to stand up, to speak up for Pohakuloa. Um, and so in talking with different people, it's really moving for me because I gotta admit, to see the US military folks in there right now in your uniforms, like I don't even know how I feel about that because when I speak up about the demilitarization of Hawaii, I feel like you're a danger to me. I feel like the agency and the group that you represent is a threat to my life and my very being and the next seven generations and the seven generations after that to come. So just you being here is giving me, it's making my heart beat right now. It's racing. And I don't, I don't, I'm not meaning that in a bad way to attack you and I don't want you to feel attacked, but I want you to know that that is, that is not only a feeling that I have, but it's a feeling that many of our people, Hawaiian and non-Hawaiian, have towards the military presence and expansion in Hawaii, we were never asked, we never consented to you folks being here, and you folks continue to illegally occupy and be present and, and expand, have the audacity to expand. And I'm not speaking to any individual, but I'm just speaking of this, of this, and I don't want anybody to take this personal because what I'm sharing is it's coming from a place of love, of love for the land and of love for you, and of love for what you do not know that you are playing with right now, and of the damages that would unfold if you do not stop. So for living in Waikiki for two years and hearing the bombs drop and everything happening, I, I, you know, I, I felt so helpless and I'm not the only one, because what do you do to deoccupy? Lives are lost in deoccupying the whole army, to, to, to getting that to stop, for getting the bombing to stop. And so a lot of our people are feeling helpless. And so we're moving together and we're swaying and we're being a support system, waving signs, talking about what we don't like and what we want to see. And a big part of that involves demilitarizing Wahapunola. And it doesn't just start and end with Wahapunola. It's all of our aina throughout Hawaii. It is not a place that you folks are welcome to bomb and to hurt because that is our ancestral mother. Literally, we are genealogically bound to this aina that you are bombing, that you are playing on, that you are poisoning, that you are destroying. And so, you know, I'm going back to this two years. I can't believe I lived there for two years and listened to this, and nobody else in Waikiki is talking about this. It's become normal, in a sense. And, and people are also in a place of fear of not being able to speak out against the military, and I don't blame them. But one thing I have to say is, I am not afraid. I am not afraid, and I'm not, and I'm not easily scared when it comes to protecting what gives me life, when it comes to protecting my family, when it comes to protecting our aina, our body, and our kai. So after two years and many years of people in this room who have heard these bombs drop, and the more we talk about it, the more I realize, hey, like, people are talking about this happening in Kau, like, all this military activity that's been going on, and I'm, I'm new here. You know, even though I'm, I'm born here, I'm new to this subject and learning about it. So I heard the bombs drop, I felt the bombs drop. And it wasn't actually until right before we were getting ready to move out of Waikiki that I saw the bombs drop. Mm -hmm. Who in this room has seen the bombs drop on Pohapulua? 
I don't know what you folks felt like the first time that that happened, but nothing could have prepared me for what I experienced when I saw the bombs drop. And it wasn't just one bomb, it was multiple bombs. There were multiple camps set up throughout Pohakuloa, and I was driving by, and all that I started to hear was boom, and the car started to shake. And there were multiple bombs being fired from multiple camps on our pool. You know, it's not, it's not only bad that this is between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, you know, a sacred passageway for the ancestors, uh, a heart of our island, but that intentionally firing these bombs at our pool. You know, and I didn't even know about this. And so it was a shock. It was not only a shock of, of seeing it, but it was a shock of, of knowing that this is actually happening and this is okay. In what realm is it okay to, to bomb the Aina, but then to, to bomb our pool? When was that okay? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if anybody knows when that was okay, but if the US military, if you folks could tell me when it, when it became okay for you guys to do that. You know, I want to know. Because what I'm learning is you guys have a deep-seated past that isn't Pono's. And in the end, Pono will prevail. So be a part of the process of bringing Pono, of restoring balance, of doing the right thing for the Aina. So I stand and I call for the demilitarization of Pohakuroa and for all ancestral and sacred places throughout Pohawa Ipai Aina and throughout the Pohonua. Because the more that I speak out, the more that I learn that the U.S. military is continuously expanding and illegally occupying not only Hawaii, but other areas throughout the world. And so I'm going to end, but one thing I'm going to share when I end is I'm going to... It's so hard for me to... I spend most of my time, honestly, on the land. I still, I just came from working on a farm and I have dirt in my fingers and in the crevices of my neck. And I haven't showered and so it's very different for me to be in a room and to try and talk to people where I'm usually surrounded by more birds, animals, and plants than human beings on a single day. And that's my beautiful life. And so I'm going to read a Facebook post that I wrote, and this, this post that I wrote carries the energy and, of the bombs dropping on the wall when I heard it. It carries the emotions of what I felt when I had saw the bombs drop on Pohakuloa and felt absolutely helpless, not knowing what I could do. Trembling, shattered, we driving past Pohakuloa, the car shook, and as I looked out the window, there they were, the U.S. military. Multiple setups along the joining of Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, heavy artillery firing multiple bombs at our Mauna. I barely stopped the car, I barely made it out. Everything went blank, silent, shocked, disbelief. This feeling, that feeling I felt, it felt like a loved one passed and was taken from this world too soon, tore from my arms, ripped from this world. It was a feeling of seeing Pohakuloa dying before my eyes, my elder, my dearest elder. As I approached the roadside, I felt my knees weaken, my heart it shattered just like our homelands into a thousand pieces over and over again. Every bomb that exploded on our lands exploded within me. I felt that pain within my womb. I felt that violence upon every cell of my body. I couldn't move. As I watched more bombs fired, fire started, military invaders scrambled around. The cars just drove by as the bombs exploded. People just drove by. My heart whispered, do not forget Wapuloa. The ancestors that came with me, they helped me at that moment. I fell to my knees, I lifted my hands, and I said the name, Wapuloa. Our home is not a grounds that should be used to train to kill, to cause violence, cooked by lies, and seek to further conquer, harm, and steal. This is to you, the U.S. military, who prances around our homelands that we owe you and you own us. It is true, our lands and people are in danger, not from those who claim to protect us from, but from you, the U.S. military who justify violence with violence, who justify pain with peace, who justify killing for humanity. We never welcomed you in our homeland. Remember, you stole all that you possess. It's time for you to go. The time was not today, it will be tomorrow. It was long ago. I am coming. We are coming. If you are reading this message now, it is infused with the bombs that are being fired in our sacred homelands, upon our sacred earth, upon Mohapulua <coughs> right now. These words, my words, are being written as tears fall from my eyes, my gut churns and heart aches. Do not be afraid to speak your truth, you are not alone. I stand with you. Stand. Speak. Rise. Do not fear, for in the end, we will return to the realm of Wapkea as stars of the ancestors. You will again return to the stars.
follow for inviting me and for hosting me. I don't have answers, but I know that trying to solve violence with more violence and trying to drop bombs and the potential to stop bombs from dropping have the answer. And so that is why I stand to demilitarize the world. Thank you.